Um, let's get started. So the, I'll talk about XML 3D, so, um, um, which is something we developed over the last five years. Um, my name is Philip Sudalik. I'm a professor of computer graphics at Saarland University, and I also lead a larger group, a research group at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, the FKI, and um, we also have a large center funded by Intel for the last eight years. And some of the work actually comes out of that. And since I only have five minutes, I'll, I'll just put out a couple of pointers to work that we've done. And I think it, a lot of the stuff matches quite well with uh, other things that are being discussed here today. Um, just very recently, last week, we presented a paper um, um, on real-time ray tracing for VR using uh, foveated rendering and eye tracking. You can actually do that at full real-time, full frame rate of an Oculus. Um, with a little bit of tricks of reprojection so you don't have to trace every pixel. Uh, works really nicely. Uh, please check out the paper at Pacific Graphics. Um, so uh, XML 3Ds itself, we started developing that in 2010, so six years old by now. Uh, it's a, develop a declarative 3D framework for HTML5. Uh, so it's similar to the spirit from VRBL, VRML, but um, we started in HTML5 and tried to add the minimum number of new elements that we need to support 3D. Uh, it's fully integrated, uh, so you have on-click uh, and CSS to kind of style your 3D um, uh, objects, so it's fully integrated. Uh, the real key difference is this generic data type, so we have uh, data types that allow you to essentially build buffers that are, will reside directly on the GPU, so it's fully programmable or, or designed for fully programmable GPUs. The technology behind that is called Xflow. Again, all of that is published. Uh, we also have uh, programmable shaders. Um, the, they use a subset of JavaScript and they get cross-compiled to GLSL, but we can also drive a ray tracer from exactly the same shaders. We can do forward and, back, uh, and, and deferred shading in, in rasterization from the same um, version of the shaders. And the whole thing is uh, render independent. Actually, the very first version of XML 3D was using real-time ray tracing in a modified browser, but then we used to mod the polyfill implementation because the browser vendors just moved ahead too fast for us to keep up. Uh, and it seems like a lot of people are kind of integrating stuff again now in the browsers natively, so it's interesting to see that happening again now. Um, we uh, have the original version, which we developed over the last six years. Um, just this year at Web3D, we published a new implementation, we internally call this XML 3D uh, next generation. And the key part here is reducing the core of XML 3D into a small library, and then now using web components, like just like A-Frame does. Um, so, but, but all of the key features of XML 3D are still maintained, and using web components, we can then layer different dialects, if you so want, um, like XML 3D or X3D or actually A-Frame on top of that. And that gives you uh, much improved flexibility and the A-Frame team just talked about that. And also this idea of a library where you can kind of automatically load um, components is, uh, is part of that. So check out the Web3D paper from earlier this year. So the key part I want to talk briefly about is this, is this data model. It's, very, it's actually a very easy model. Uh, we have data tables, which essentially contain um, arrays or, or buffers in, in that sense. They're named, they're typed, um, and you can actually reuse these data buffers very flexibly. You can compose them, uh, you can select, and uh, you can apply operators to them. Um, so for doing things like um, animation computations, or uh, actually we did a lot of AR with that, actually in JavaScript, amazing, that actually works. Um, you can do image processing in real time in JavaScript. We were actually surprised ourselves. So, so just very quickly, we have these data tables here on the right. Um, they, they consist of uh, lists of arrays of, again, typed stuff. You can compose these things hierarchically. And then this is kind of the common data structure. And they get linked to uh, rendering elements, which then feed the geometry uh, to WebGL. And all of the other stuff is fed as, if the shader wants something that has the same name, the same type, is fed to the shader. So there's a direct connection, but very, separation, but direct connection between the different elements and uh, shaders on the, on the drawing and shaders on the other side. And then there's scene graph elements that kind of organize stuff. So very nice and clean design, I think. And in the new version, we actually use 3JS for rendering. Um, uh, just to give you an idea how this web component stuff here is the idea of how to add uh, uh, to, uh, uh, a frame to the whole thing. 
right? We define uh, a sphere thing with the positions here. We group things, we have this mesh, and then you have these data containers here, and we can apply operators to them. Um, so we take the radius um, and then feed that into a, a operator that generates a sphere, for instance, or that takes this uh, string and generates the color out of that. Uh, very flexible, very generic stuff, and again, uh, this is usually designed not for these uh, simple data types, but for large arrays of texture coordinates, uh, uh, keyframes, or animations, and other stuff. Works really well. Um, and if we are lucky and we get a video, I can show you the whole thing in action. Um, this is a, supposed to be a scene of 3.5 million polygons. It's a King's Cross station. In, uh, in London, 350 objects. Um, objects actually are a problem. Um, the um, elements in the web browsers are very heavy weight. Uh, we've been working with the car industry, and uh, a car model has tens of thousands of individual elements, and actually the, 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 the data structures for elements in, H, in, in the DOM are actually too heavyweight. It's not the 3D data that's killing us, it's actually the overhead in the browser. So that's probably something for the Okay, so the video doesn't seem to work. Uh, it will be online. And exactly. Um, um, yeah, I wanted to point out uh, for publications, and one final thing, um, we are we're, we're having the VR community and we have the web community we've talked about. There's also a nice conference uh, that I think could be interesting for this audience here, which is the High Performance Graphics Conference. Uh, in June, uh, which is focused on the systems and the high performance uh, aspects, and I think that's something for stuff that's being discussed here a lot. Thanks.